Hello y'all, we are here on another episode of Historical Markers and we are in Jackson County, Illinois today. And we are going to look at some, I mean, well, there's a lot of them, let me just tell you. There are a lot of markers here in Jackson County and we're going to look at some of them that are just amazing. I, I, I know they're going to be cool. I'm going to learn stuff. Are you going to learn stuff? Hope so. So join us and stick around and let's see what we find out all right well i'm standing here on the banks of the mississippi river and i want to say uh, this is part two of our jackson county historical markers video we had to split it up into two parts um, so join us here as we give you part two of all of the many wonders of Jackson County, Illinois. We are in Carbondale, Illinois, and this marker says Carbondale College and Southern Illinois College. The evolution of Southern Illinois University began here in 1856 when Presbyterians founded Carbondale College. Suffering hardships during the Civil War, the college was sold to the First Christian Church in the mid-1860s and renamed Southern Illinois College. The existing college, with a student body of 300, was pivotal in Carbondale, being chosen as the location for Southern Illinois Normal University in 1869. Leading these efforts were town founder Daniel Brush, businessman James Campbell, and minister Clark Braden. The university opened at its current location in 1874 and was renamed Southern Illinois University in 1947. And just as a side note, um, Southern, we, Edward and I are both alumni of Southern Illinois University here in Carbondale. All right, this memorial, we are in the cemetery here in Carbondale. This is in town. And this first marker says, in this cemetery was held the first memorial service to the Civil War veterans, April 1866, which inspired General John A. Logan, a citizen of Carbondale, to issue General Order Number 11 as Grand Commander of GAR, establishing National Memorial Day, May 30th, 1868. This other marker is right across from the other one and it talks about the first memorial service in Illinois so this is the side of it the first memorial service in Illinois and one of the first in the nation to honor those who had died in the Civil War took place at Woodlawn Cemetery on April 29th 1866 on that day a group of more than 200 veterans gathered at the Old Blue Church on what is now East Jackson Street Methodist minister J.W. Lane stood on the steps to greet them. The marshal of the day, Colonel E.J. Ingersoll, and the speaker, General John A. Logan of the Union Army, led a procession to Woodlawn Cemetery. During the service, General Logan declared that every man's life belongs to his country and no man has a right to refuse when his country calls for it. Following the Civil War, General Logan became commander of the Grand Army of the Republic. Impressed by the memorial observance at Woodlawn Cemetery, he signed General Order No. 11, setting May 30, 1868, as Memorial Day. Logan hoped the observance will be kept up from year to year. By 1888, Memorial Day became a legal holiday in 12 northern states. Later, it became a legal holiday throughout the country. The city of Carbondale continues this honored custom by conducting a, an observance in Woodlawn Cemetery every Memorial Day. Woodlawn Cemetery was placed on the National Register of Historic Places on December 19, 1985, and was designated a Carbondale Historic Landmark on March 8, 1994. And then it's got some pictures of um, some of the different veterans that were honored and where they're buried, a map of where they're buried here in the cemetery. All right, 
right, we're still at Woodlawn Cemetery in Carbondale, Illinois. And this marker here says that it's um, talking about the Woodlawn Cemetery Memorial Day celebration. On April 29, 1866, over 200 veterans and several thousand citizens gathered at Woodlawn Cemetery to honor those who had died in the Civil War. General John A. Logan delivered the keynote address saying, Every man's life belongs to his country and no man has the right to refuse when his country calls for it. This memorial service influenced Logan as Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic to issue GAR, General Order No. 11, on May 5, 1868. This order instructed his comrades to observe May 30, 1868 and successive May 30ths as Decoration Day by strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion. All right, we are here in downtown Carbondale, Illinois, and this is a veterans memorial um, from World War One. And World War II. The Korean War. My daddy's a veteran of the Korean War. Vietnam. and Iraq. So this is a, uh, a really nice memorial for all of those veterans that served. Okay, here in downtown Carbondale, um, by the train depot and museum area, and over there in the, uh, that area there are a lot of markers we're gonna cover them and um, we're gonna see we'll probably learn a lot because I don't spend much time here at this part of town so all right station number one Daniel Harmon Brush founded Carbondale in 1852 along the right-of-way of the Illinois Central Railroad the railroad became the center of the town's activity, bisecting what would become the town square. The photo above depicts the railroad facilities in 1864. The 1854 freight passenger depot built by Brush is on the left, and the second passenger depot, circa 1860, is in the background. The photo below depicts the second passenger depot as it appeared in 1896. In 1903, Monroe Street was vacated to allow construction of the third passenger depot still in existence. The 1903 depot, designed by Francis Bacon, an Illinois Central Railroad architect, became the city's first designated historic landmark in 1991. This photo to the left shows the third passenger depot as it appeared circa 1905. All right, this is station number two. Following construction of the Illinois Central Railroad, frame and brick commercial buildings were built on the east side of Town Square. The photo to the right depicts the 100 block of North Washington, circa 1870. The Rickert and Campbell building housed a store, bank, and opera house, and it is the oldest surviving building on the square. In 1894, the First National Bank bought the bankrupt Rickert and Campbell store and hired Isaac Rapp to remodel the structure. Rapp, who lived from 1830 to 1913, trained in New York and considered, was considered one of Carbondale's most respected architects, redesigned the building in the Second Empire architectural style. The photo to the left shows a portion of the 100 block of North Washington following major, rem major remodeling in the late 1890s. A third remodeling of the Rickert and Campbell building can be seen in the photo to the right, circa 1920.
Okay, this is station number three. In 1869, Carbondale was chosen as the location for Southern Illinois College. By the early 1870s, several new commercial brick buildings were planned for the town square, reflecting growth and optimism. The New Old House Hotel at 101 South Washington, circa the photos circa 1920, was constructed in 1872 for $73,000. The three-story brick structure reflected the Italian style. The building's original elaborate facade remains intact beneath the existing metal facade added in the 1960s. Okay, this is station number four. trying to get it at where you are. I'm not in the picture. Sorry about that. My shadow's there. A major change in the configuration of the town square occurred about 1900 when the Illinois Central Railroad announced an expansion, expansion of its Carbondale facilities. New tracks were added in the St. Louis Division office depicted in this circa 1920 photo was constructed on the west side of Washington Street where the parking area exists today. The railroad also added a fountain, bandstand, and landscaping. The fountain was returned to the square in 1992 and is situated approximately 75 feet east of its original location. Right, this is station number five. By 1900, 50 trains a day stopped at the town square. Passengers disembarked to find commercial buildings with corner turrets and ornate windows. Example, examples are the Dunaway Building, erected in 1900 at 102 to 106 East Jackson, and the F.A. Prickett Building, erected in 1903 at 127 North Washington. The photo depicts a southbound view of the buildings in the 100 block of North Washington, circa 1915, with the Prickett building in the foreground. These buildings were rebuilt after a series of fires plagued the town square between 1900 and 1905. Construction of the Oddfellows building at the northeast corner of Washington and Jackson Streets was begun in July 1893, but was suspended with the failure of the Rickert and Campbell Bank in 1893. John C. Hundley later completed the building during a period of national economic depression that occurred following the Panic of 1893. All right, this is station number six in 1898. The railroad industry was approaching its height in Carbondale. The expansion of the Illinois Central Railroad resulted in numerous families relocating to the area and major expansion of railroad facilities north of the town square. This circa 1900 photo depicts a southbound view of the railroad property intersecting at Jackson Street. The division headquarters building is visible to the left side of the photo and the freight depot is on the right. A big artisan well and seven new switches were constructed to handle the large number of freight trains slated to be dispatched from Carbondale. The abundance of southern Illinois coal and a greatly expanded loading chute at the switchyard made Carbondale a major coaling point for Illinois Central trains. Railroad schedules published in 1898 show at least 33 trains a day stopping in Carbondale on five different shipping lines. <laughs> All right, sorry about the condition of this uh, marker, but this is station number seven. Because of the active railroad, freight and passenger line Overnight lodging facilities were in demand, and several hotels were constructed. The most imposing of the early hotels was the Union House, later the Planters House Hotel. 
It stood on the northwest corner of Illinois Avenue and Jackson Street. The hotel was enlarged to three stories in 1874, as depicted in the photo to the right. Known as the Franklin Hotel in the 20th century, it was de demolished in 1991. The photo to the left depicts a southbound view of the 100 block of North Illinois Avenue circa 1890. The Olden Hodge building in the foreground was built prior to 1890 and was extensively remodeled in 1917. In 1887, the city council ordered 14 streets improved and five foot brick rather than oak plank sidewalks constructed on Main and the other major streets. Broad 12 foot wide brick or stone walks were also ordered for the east, north and west sides of the town square. All right, this is station number eight. This is the Solomon and Winters Dry Goods Store, built in 1897 at the northeast corner of Illinois Avenue and Jackson Street, is in the background of this fo photo circa 1905. This was the first commercial building in Carbondale with a corner turret. The building's first floor featured cast iron columns and wood panels surrounding large plate glass windows. The second story, was trimmed in stone and featured three Oreo windows and five double arched windows. The building burned in 1957. A portion of the Franklin Hotel, formerly the Planters House, is in the background. This is station number nine. In 1868, the city passed an ordinance forbidding frame construction on the square. The photo to the left, which is circa 1900, depicts the new brush building at 100 South Illinois Avenue. The store was built in 1895 to replace the city's first commercial structure, a wood frame general store built in 1852 by Carbondale founder Daniel Brush. The owner, Harriet Rapp Brush, daughter-in-law of Daniel Brush, retained her father, Isaac Rapp, to design and build the new building with principal facades on both Main Street and Illinois Avenue. The adjoining building at 106 South Illinois Avenue, completed by 1882, is an L-shaped building having a prominent three-story facade on Illinois Avenue and two-story facade on Main Street. In 1856, James Morgan built a three-story brick building at 100 North Illinois Avenue. The photo to the right, circa 1910, depicts the Morgan store following a remodeling in 1906. In 1928, the Carbondale National Bank constructed the existing building. It has a smooth limestone surface and a sleek style reminiscent of the Midwestern Art Deco architectural style fashionable in the 1920s and 30s. This statue was placed here by Station Carbondale, Inc. through donations from people dedicated to the preservation of Carbondale's railroad history. The first train came to Carbondale July 4, 1854. As many as 53 passenger trains passed through here each day at the peak of our railroad activity. We salute our railroaders for their hard work and dedication to their profession. And it's still a very active um, railroad community. Amtrak um, runs out of Carbondale on a regular basis. All right, this marker is for Daniel Harmon Brush. On April 23rd, 1861, 11 days after Confederates fired on Fort Sumter, the co-founder of Carbondale, Daniel Harmon Brush, called a public meeting on this town square. 
Brush delivered a patriotic speech in support of the Union. Two days later, Brush stood atop his building on the southwest corner of Illinois Avenue and Main Street, waved the American flag, and dared Southern sympathizers to take it down. Brush's two speeches during the opening days of the Civil War affirmed the region's loyalty to the Union at a time when some in the area advocated secession or support of the South. All right, we're here at Turley Park in Carbondale, Illinois. It's just a nice little park here on this uh, peninsula of ground. And we are here for this marker over here. Isn't that sculpture kind of cool? But this marker is for the Reverend Linus Turley, April 27th, 1904 to November 8th, 1969. He said, I, if I have helped someone a long life's way, then my living has not been in vain. All right, y'all, this has been episode of Historical Markers, Jackson County. Have you learned something? I'm I'm amazed at some of the um, things that I've read. It's just fascinating, and I hope you find it fascinating. Drop me a message. Let me know what you think. Um, if Did we miss something in Jackson County? Let us know. So um, stay in touch. I want to know what y'all are thinking about the, this uh, series. I, I love it. So stay tuned for the next episode. Stick around, Come back. Learn more stuff. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.